Mr. Beidou, how did you learn that Ghana and Russia has come to the point of making a decision to to develop and build a nuclear plant? Uh, Phyllis, uh, I discovered this uh, by chance, just uh, uh, surfing on the net. You know, occasionally when I get up in the morning, I uh, go through the Ghana web, you know, and I uh, just stumbled on this uh, uh, accidentally. You know, I was really alarmed that the uh, uh, there was an earlier discussion in the Ghanaian delegation including the Minister of uh, Energy, was going to meet with the Russians uh, in uh, late uh, June 2013. That's how it all uh, evolved. And obviously you have a strong feeling against this whole program. So why do you think that nuclear power for Ghana is a bad idea? I believe it's a bad idea mainly because we haven't really exhaust all the re renewable energy resources available to Ghana. We've got uh, sunshine, you know, we can, the, uh, the potential to harness uh, the sun's energy from, sun, uh, from solar alone is pretty huge. Uh, we haven't even uh, tapped 10% of that uh, resource. And uh, we've got uh, wind energy as well. So I believe we we're probably using a sledgehammer to kill a fly, you know. Uh, we've got to run out of the insecticides first, you know, uh, before we reach for the for the sledgehammer. So I, I believe surely nuclear power should be considered, you know, but we really have to exhaust all the renewable energy resources before we even double into this. The other issue, though, is that the nuclear one of the main drawback is the fact that you've got uh, a radioactive waste which you would, you would have to manage for a very long time a considerable length of time in some cases about 10,000 or sorry ten, thousands of years you know so uh, and that to me creates a, a big challenge for Ghana you know uh, currently we are struggling to even handle our domestic waste you know and uh, uh, having to deal with uh, uh, waste which is reactive and we'll have to manage it for another thousand of years is something I believe we cannot uh, comprehend, we cannot afford to be able, to, uh, we cannot afford to do that at this point in time. You know, your, your sentiments are well uh, understood, but then uh, don't you think there can be a circumstance in which nuclear energy can definitely work in Ghana? Oh, no, surely, they, uh, definitely it would work in Ghana, but you've got to look at the, the life cycle cost, okay? Uh, the advantage with uh, nuclear, the, the systems are normally a typical plant will follow very strict procedures, okay? So the safety record's very high, okay? However, you've got to look at the risk. You, the risk is uh, obviously the consequences and the likelihood, you know. Uh, if you factor all those in, in the potential for catastrophic failures is pretty high, and uh, if it does happen, you need to have uh, all the infrastructure in place to move uh, people around. You know, you're talking about, say, millions of people along the coast of uh, Ghana. You need to move them in a hurry. You need to have all the communication systems. You need to have helicopters. You need to have all the yeah, all the supporting services available to move uh, a large number of people from harm's way within a very short period. And I, I don't believe I believe we 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 are able to do it, but I don't believe we've got the capacity to do it that now. But if you're considering a, a nuclear plant, obviously you have to. Uh, factor those issues also in, you know. The decommissioning cost, uh, I mean, if things do go wrong, the decommissioning cost of a typical nuclear plant is pretty uh, astronomical. And I think, uh, let me see, I can't even remember what the figures were, but uh, it, it is quite, uh, it's going to be a huge drain on our resources. So I don't believe at this point in our development is, even worth uh, thinking about. And you, in your 18-page paper against nuclear for Ghana, yes. 
you suggested that if the government should make a definite decision sh- to go ahead, yeah. then um, the matter should be put uh, to the Ghanaian population as sort of referendum. Now, uh, that, that is correct. W- what if majority of Ghanaians right now actually want the nuclear to go ahead or if in the future time there's a sort of referendum and they agree, uh, where does that put your whole argument if the majority of the people are willing to go ahead? No, uh, Philip, normally uh, situations like this in uh, most other countries, the, the process is very clear. You would, first of all, uh, consult, okay? Uh, in a matter like this, the view of uh, a janitor, a market uh, street selling person, whoever, their views are extremely important. So it it is important for the government to follow that due process. You've got to consult, you've got to engage with the people so that the the average person on the street would uh, back or uh, yeah, would either back or deny support for this project. But at the moment, uh, we're going through the process without any due consultation process. Okay? However, if uh, that does happen and the Ghanaians uh, obviously offer for it, then of course uh, it's a decision that everybody ought to embrace. But at the moment, it would sound as if it's been clouded in some sort of secrecy and it's been uh, handled uh, on the side without that uh, consultative uh, process. And I know you've uh, said a number of things already as to why nuclear energy just might not work. Uh, For the uninformed uh, who would probably just say, yes, it's a good idea or it's a sign of development, what can you say to to counteract uh, that kind of uh, readiness to accept it? We definitely have to adopt a, a balanced approach, okay? Uh, we have to be in a position to present the facts the way they are without any fear or favor, you know? When, when I cast my eye around, you know, the, uh, the Fukushima uh, nuclear disaster comes to mind. You got a situation whereby the, uh, the plant failed, you know? And uh, the, the, uh, the Japanese couldn't handle it, you know? With all their technology, the, uh, all the infrastructure in place, they, they couldn't handle it. So we really have to, um, and now this time I'm talking about the government, they really have to present the facts the way they are, and then uh, let the uh, uh, Ghanaians uh, make the informative uh, decision. You know, At the moment, uh, we, we're, not, we're not doing that, and that really concerns me. You know? And one thing you promote an idea you promote in your paper is the fact that solar energy would be a better option and that it would actually work in Ghana. Your confidence uh, was shown in, in a paper. Yeah, now, how, how factual is this assumption? Oh, it is factual in the sense that when I cast my eye around uh, uh, the whole of Australia, there are solar panels everywhere. I classify this as solar panel galore. In fact, uh, some of these uh, systems are fed directly into the grid. Others uh, have got set up, which is said that uh, you would uh, use part at home and then uh, the SS goes straight into the grid. You know, there are all type of uh, uh, permutations and combinations you can get into. The other interesting aspect is uh, that when we lived in, the, in Vacago, Macargo is a, a small town um, at the southern tip of uh, New Zealand. Where we had very little sunshine, you know. We lived there for about eight years, and uh, we visited quite a few homes, and some of the homes were fully reliant on uh, solar power without any connection to the grid, you know, no grid connection at all. So I have uh, confidence that the system will work in Ghana, and for me, it's very simple. You know, we would, uh, if we encourage about, say, 2 million uh, uh, homes to uh, uh, embrace this technology, we have the potential to generate uh, about, say, two, uh, sorry, 4,000 megawatts of uh, uh, solar energy if every home adopts uh, 
a two kilowatt uh, solar panel system, you know, and uh, that takes a huge. I'm talking about a huge amount of pressure on on uh, energy requirement. So you could potentially have uh, uh, what do you call it? A coastal dam feeding all the industries. And we'll supplement that uh, for our domestic no, no. use. Uh, the battery capacity will be about that. Uh, in terms of uh, space, that's what you need. You know, possibly smaller, depending on your your power uh, need. You know, so potentially the, the so Ghana is fully ripe for to ad- embrace this uh, energy system. And yet, some people, it is their thinking as well um, that. Uh, solar would work best in Africa only over certain countries, which doesn't include Ghana, and that it is not just about sunshine, but has something to do with uh, the the quality of the sunshine. You see, I refute that uh, uh, claim. Uh, I just made reference to a place like Invercargill, New Zealand, where uh, there is very little sunshine, you know. Uh, for most part of the year, you'll probably be lucky to have sunshine for more than three, four hours a day, you know. And uh, I made reference to the fact that, yes, we, we visited homes that had uh, solar systems uh, providing all their energy needs. And uh, I've got data before me which clearly demonstrate that uh, the amount of sunshine we have in Ghana is a lot more than what a uh, place like in Chicago or typical towns in New Zealand would enjoy, you know. So the claim that uh, the relative humidity and all these other factors come in, yeah, it could be true, but what is important, if you stick a solar panel right uh, in my home uh, in Ghana, you, you would uh, generate electricity. And it's very simple. Uh, it is what is called the photoelectric effect. Uh, you have a, uh, how can I explain it now? I want to use a term which is easily understood. You've got a, a piece of metal uh, which we refer to as a semiconductor. Uh, you uh, shine light on it, which is sunlight, and that causes uh, the electrons within the metal to move around, and that's your electricity, you know. Uh, and that's as simple as it, as it can get. You know, there are complicated uh, solar energy systems whereby you would focus this, uh, you would concentrate this sunshine to a, a, look, a spot and, and generate steam from that spot and use to drive a turbine, you know. But that's complex. Uh, I'm uh, proposing uh, a system which does not require any moving path, and that's why the photovoltaic uh, system, which is a panel energy and you tap your electricity from there is what uh, I'll be advocating for. And uh, and uh, maybe a larger question, right? As a Ghanaian uh, engineer, but yep. based in Australia, what would be your general comment about the fact that uh, Ghana seems to have allowed such a, a, should we say, a catastrophic shortfall in energy to yep. the point where it is seeming like whatever is done from now on um, isn't enough to address it at a reasonable time where there's going to be a continued shortage of energy for a few good years. Uh, what will? Why do you think a situation like that developed um, in, in terms of uh, the, ad- the general administration of the country? Yeah, Philip, I, I believe it's primarily due to lack of uh, adequate planning. You know, as uh, you know, currently uh, Ghana's uh, uh, generating capacity is approximately 2,000 megawatts. And uh, it is estimated that we need an additional 4,000 megawatts uh, by 2015, which is in about uh, uh, less than three years' time. You know, that to me clearly demonstrate that we haven't planned, we haven't done the homework well, okay? Uh, so I, I believe that's the root cause, okay? But nevertheless, we've got the opportunity to fix that because to address this issue, if, if, if you go down the nuclear energy path, it's going to take you at least another 10 years to even 
get to uh, commissioning a nuclear plant because obviously you can't buy this off the shelf. It's got to be uh, designed, uh, built. You know, somebody might argue that the design is available right now, but you really have to uh, build it, test it, and make sure it's going to work, make sure it's not going to fail prematurely, okay? So you've got all these quality systems that you've got to go through. So from inception to commissioning of a nuclear plant, it's going to take you at least 10 years, you know? But for a solar plant, uh, my guess is that it's going to take uh, maybe two years at most, you know, because uh, it is an easily... Uh, uh, it is an easy system to install. You know, you can easily organize uh, panels from wherever and just hook it up, and uh, there you go. So the from inception to f commissioning for the solar panel system is pretty short. And uh, the, like I said before, the root cause of this problem is the lack of uh, adequate planning. You know, and uh, we obviously. We, we, we need to address that, you know, going forward. And the tone of your paper against nuclear and uh, for solar it kind of puts you in a class of a, a campaigner of some sort, right? And a lot of campaigners have experienced a lot of failure. What are you doing? What would you do further to um, see success in what you believe are good ideas? Well, I wouldn't call myself a campaigner. Well, what I was trying to do by this uh, article is to clearly present the facts in order for, uh, first of all, to generate a discussion among the Ghanaians from the politicians down to uh, the street sweeper, uh, the guy selling uh, or the lady selling KNK in the market, so at least so that... And uh, you will notice I've chosen the words in such a way that the layman or the lay person could easily understand it. Okay, so the uh, I wouldn't say I'm really campaigning, but what I'm trying to do here is to uh, draw this to the attention of the whole the Ghanaian public, so that they can at least uh, influence the, uh, the the people in authority, those who are responsible for making this uh, decision, you know. But what is important is uh, for the people in authority to consult with the people, uh, obviously give them the necessary information, but that didn't take place. So what I'm trying to do here is to present the information and hopefully when the, before the decision is eventually made or before our leaders sign on the dotted line and commit this uh, country, then uh, uh, hopefully they would have uh, influenced them one way or the other. Well, Mr. Julius Beidou, an engineer resident in Melbourne, Australia, thank you very much for speaking to me on this matter. Okay, Mr. Philip Nyaku, thank you for giving me the opportunity to express my view and then do the right thing for my country as well.